Hi everyone, my name is Ashley, also known as QP83 on YouTube. And I'm Patty, also known as Barbie0913. And we are so happy to be here presenting again at a virtual doll convention. It's always so much fun mm -hmm. um, to talk to you guys about dolls and to see all the other programs that um, are presented during mm -hmm. these virtual doll conventions. Truly, yes. Um, so just one quick note, I'm a little froggy. We so have a deadline. <laughs> <laughs> we have to shoot this. So hopefully you can understand everything we're saying. But yeah, just just so you know, if you're brand new, these are not our normal voices. <laughs> um, so a little thing about a little brief introduction to us as we both have YouTube channels. Mm -hmm. We're mother and daughter, doll duo, so to speak. <laughs> um, so definitely if you have not looked at the channels, please give them a look-see. The links will be at the end of the video. Mm -hmm. um, but we love talking about dolls, reviewing do. dolls, doing show hauls. Buying dolls. Buying dolls and all that fun stuff. So today we are presenting a talk on a pretty fun topic, I think. Mm. As you know, this whole convention is themed around Robert, Robert Tonner. Robert Tonner, yes. And all of his fantastic creations over the years. Um, and a lot of the creations that get a lot of press are like Elowin, mm -hmm. Evangeline, like the wild imagination stuff. Oh, yeah, I love that. Yeah. The superheroes that he did, mm -hmm. the movie tie-in dolls. So many licenses. The yes. Gone with the Wind dolls. He has had so many different licenses. It's insane. You could mm -hmm. do a whole video on the many licenses of Tanner Dolls. Robert Tanner. <laughs> Because um, some of them are quite surprising. Yeah, they are. <laughs> um, however, there is also a um, whole company that he did that was more based around Playline dolls. Near and dear to my heart. Right. Playline dolls are more accessible. They're a little better price point. Mm -hmm. um, they're made with play in mind, not just, you know, collecting on a shelf. Behind glass. Right. So they're made with play in mind. Well, actually, mind. mine were behind glass. Yeah, I mean, a lot of my Playline dolls do end up behind glass, too, but they're more durable, so if yeah. your, like, toddler wants to, like, accidentally grab it, you that's don't have okay. to worry as much. <laughs> not that that's happened at all. No, not yet. No, of course not. Um, so, for, for a, a few years there, Tanner was breaking into the Playline uh, arena mm -hmm. with a couple of his releases. So that is what we're going to talk to you today. We're going to talk to you about some of the more accessible, um, more affordable mm -hmm. Playline dolls that were also meant to be like beginner collector dolls. And that's what they are. Um, that he created mm -hmm. over the years. And I think it's kind of important because, I mean, to create a doll collector, you need to have a love of dolls, dolls. to begin with, right? Yeah, you do. So, and how do you create a love of dolls? It started in the beginning. You play with them, mm -hmm. right? That's what we all did. You have adventures with them. Mm -hmm. You, you know, it's, it's, do you take them on your trips, your vacations? You, you mm -hmm. play with them. They mm -hmm. have a life to you. Right. And that is what propels us all to become mm -hmm. lifelong doll collectors versus, you know. And we're the, still the people that go on trips and say, what doll is coming with mm -hmm. me? <laughs> and one of the dolls you'll see today is one of my travel dolls because it's just, she's just so fun to bring. Um, but I think it is important because a lot of people think Robert Tanner and they think high-end, high -end, yes. fancy collectors mm -hmm. don't touch. That's right. And there, there are definitely dolls like that, but there are some really great dolls he made that were designed with more play in mind. Articulation, fun things to do. Exactly. Because like I said, that's... That's how we all became doll collectors, mm -hmm. so uh, that's what we should still keep in mind, I think. Strive for. So, we're going to talk about Tanner Toys. Tanner Toys was a company that was established in 2009. It was the brainchild of Robert Tanner, Jack Kralik, Jason Riley, and a silent partner. Um, together, their goal was to create dolls that were more accessible to people outside of solely the collector's realm. Um, their tagline was Tanner Toys Play Pure and Simple, mm -hmm. which I think they did succeed in when yeah, you see those the dolls. Are. Yeah. You can kind of tell us, too, if you think he succeeded in that. But although it was created in 2009, we wouldn't actually see any dolls under this umbrella until 2011, um, which is when the debut line uh, made its grand debut, mm -hmm. which was Little Mismatched. And mm -hmm. that was created in partnership with the popular New York-based company um, known for selling um, mismatched socks. Which you had dozens <laughs> of. 
Yeah, unintentionally, I have tons of mismatched socks. But in this particular case, they, mm -hmm. they literally sold three socks that were all yeah. colorful and completely different. Yeah. <laughs> the brand Little Mismatch was formed in 2004, um, and since then, I believe the brand is still alive and kicking. Hmm. Because their website is still up. Really? So I don't know if it's the same owners or, or anything, because I didn't look into that aspect of it. But I believe the brand is still out there. Um, mm -hmm. But since then, they've become a champion for the freedom of expression through fashion for young girls, um, eventually realizing also that this theme of individuality and expression was universal, so they expanded to make things for all genders. So for a lot of this presentation, I did pull from old press releases, which are very useful if you're ever doing a presentation like this, because they always have a lot of fun quotes that you can put in. Um, so my mom is going to continue this this uh, chat here. <laughs> so in a press release announcing the Dow line, Robert Tonner is quoted as saying, we are so excited to be working with such a dynamic, expressive company like Little Mismatched. When it comes right down to it, really, it was just a great, well, match, pun intended. I love the pun. <laughs> um, we have both met Mr. Tonner at a uh, toy fair before, so mm -hmm. um, we can totally picture him saying something like that. A hundred percent. I can like hear him talking and saying this and like smiling while he's saying it. He's just a very, from the outside persona that we both saw, I think, right. he's just a very like jovial, he was very jovial. quirky person. He he's is. just a cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> um, so with this little mismatch, the doll line, it features four dolls. They're all unique in their own separate ways, as you would imagine, being based on this, this other company. Um, so they have cool outfits and shoes that are made from bright, colorful, or reversible patterns, um, joyfully mismatched mm -hmm. together. In addition, each doll is paired with three kid-sized misma mismatched socks to, add, to put in that aspect of the brand I as had well. forgotten that part before. I had but, to. Yeah. Um, so the little mismatched face sculpt was sculpted by Robert Tonner, um, according to the press release. And in a way, that was like the perfect line to launch Tonner Toys, I think. Just because, as we said, like, Mr. Tanner, Robert Tanner, mm -hmm. however we're going to call him in this video. I always <laughs> feel like I need to say Mr. Tanner. Mr. Tanner. Mr. Tanner. Um, he is just a very, like, like upbeat, like, jovial guy outwardly. Um, it's like the at least the toy fairs that we saw him in. Mm -hmm. So this was like the perfect line, I feel like. Oh, he's also dressed meticulously. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes. Um... But it was the perfect line to launch Tonner Toys because like the bright and colorful nature fits with the excitement and the whimsy seen in so many of Robert Tonner's mm -hmm. designs. Mm. Now Tonner Toys Little Mismatched line hit QVC for one hour on August 29th. It was sold as a gift set with the doll outfit separates and a kid size surprise. After that you could only find them at your local Toys R Us or FAO Schwartz or um, Little Mismatch stores. They received the doll and they sold the fashion packs that fall of 2011. Yeah, an interesting thing about the QVC release is that it was an Uptown Girl, um, which is one that's in the normal releases, mm -hmm. the normal four, but this Uptown Girl that QVC sold was blonde, um, and the Uptown Girl that you saw at Toys R Us was mm -hmm. a bright redhead. I like the redhead. <laughs> I love the redhead too. Yeah. It's very like, kind of chic, like yeah. 19. Yeah. I don't know, 50s kind of mm -hmm. chic. She's cute. Um, but it's interesting. So if you see an uptown girl that is blonde, it is the QVC huh. edition, which was only sold for that like one hour on QVC. Well, where are they? I want to find one. <laughs> I saw one online when I was oh. looking. Yeah. It was like price $50, different? something like that. It wasn't that bad. Hmm. Um, so now that you know a little bit about the launch of Tonner Toys and how this partnership with Miss Little Mismatched came together, let's talk about the four dolls in the Mismatched range, or Little Mismatched range. So as I mentioned, there are four dolls. Each doll was themed, um, so you'll probably see them referred to as a theme as opposed to a name. Um, the dolls were Rock and Roll Girl, who is the brunette, Artsy Girl, which has raven hair, Uptown Girl, um, the standard wide release which is a redhead and sporty girl which is a blonde so sadly i only have one we do only <laughs> have one physically here to show you um because as even though they were at toys r us i feel like 
We saw yeah, them. hard to find. We saw the voice. We saw the same one. Mm -hmm. This one was always there, and until they like closed, yeah. all our Toys R Us has started to close down, and you still saw her sitting there and sitting there, and it was like she needed a home. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for whatever reason, we didn't mm -hmm. get all four of them. No, I don't even remember seeing all. The yeah, other ones. which is a shame because I mean, this was the launch of the line, so you'd think these Toys R Us would be ordering them mm -hmm. like crazy. She has her <clears throat> tag still. So that's a ton of Toys tag. Um, and so these dolls are like 15 and a quarter inches tall. Sometimes you'll probably see them referred to as 16 inches tall. Um, so they're actually pretty big. And I feel like that was a different size for mm -hmm. if you think about back to like 2011 mm -hmm. um, when these guys came out. The, not a lot of dolls were this size. So it's pretty unique. Um, she has one of her socks. Aww. There we go. Three. Three nice. different ones. I'm surprised you still have that. It's in the backpack. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> Um, little mismatched dolls are made of vinyl and they were designed to be played with or, or displayed depending on, you know, whatever your fancy was. Um, for me, they're just too colorful to consider it like hiding on a shelf. Mm -hmm. So definitely they're the kind of dolls that like, from, from my perspective, you take outside, you take pictures of, you take them on adventures. They're nice to hold in your hand. They're, yeah. They're a good size. Um, so the bodies have some, have some articulation. They have 10 points of articulation, so their head will move. It will take her off. Um, her head will, will turn around and tilt up and down. She has a chest joint here, so you can tilt her chest a little bit. She has, of course, her shoulder and her elbow and her hip and her knee. The only thing they're lacking is a wrist joint. Mm -hmm. They also don't have a, um, ankle joint. But really, I don't miss ankle joints so much. It's just this wrist that I always mm -hmm. want to like turn, because you'll see this body repeatedly on other doll lines that were produced um, for Tonner toys. So that's the only thing that bugs me. But it does have some nice articulation for a playline doll. And she can stand by herself. Yeah, great. Like she's a solid stander. Yes. Um. So the body, like I said, allows for all those fun things. The eyes are painted, and she has not rooted nylon hair. It's actually really nice. I like her style in this one. Um, and while only one wave of these was released, there were also some fashion packs that came along with mm -hmm. it. So you might see, if you're Googling these guys later, some fashion packs. That is one of them on not a tonner. Toy. Right. <laughs> it, it works on your BJD also, and it's reversible. Ta -da. Yeah, I have some of my BJDs in this too because you got a lot of pieces. With every fashion pack, you could do up to like 32 different combinations of outfits. And I love this cloak kind of thing. I thought it was so cute. And mm. then the shirt underneath goes with it. Skirt isn't, mm -hmm. but it works. Yeah, I think the, the fashion packs are really fun, mm -hmm. especially if you're looking for other dolls to dress. I think we only saw two of them though in the store. Yeah, two apparently we were six. Packs. Yeah. <laughs> Our Toys R Us was just not doing the job. <laughs> um, so a second wave does seem to have been planned, um, which I found interesting because when I was Googling and researching and stuff, someone had prototypes of a second wave of these dolls that I don't even know how they got. It was on eBay or something. Where do they get, yes, I want to know, where do they get these, these prototypes? It was I eBay. A prototype. Right? And so it was basically the same four dolls, but they were in different outfits that were in various stages of being completed. Um, so we never saw that second wave. However, it does, um, like one website said that they were told there were issues with the partnership that strained the relationship and then everything else fell through. I don't know how true that is. It could be a blatant lie. Yeah. But this one website said they had a, a source that said that there were just some differences between the two companies and the line just kind of fell, down, fell through the cracks. It's kind of a shame we never saw any more, mm -hmm. um, but alas. Oh, and the fashion pack names, those are kind of cool. High Contrast, Layer On, Mod Pod, Pretty Sporty, and... Um, and the other two we, are we generic names, because that's all I could find. Generic names. <laughs> those, are, those don't sound like they're really cool names. Okay. <laughs> so, that's a little mismatch. Okay, so, Tanner Toy's next endeavor was a range of dolls called City Girls. Um, they were crafted by Robert Connor and uh, toy creative Jason Caro Riley. I'm probably mispronouncing these last names. I apologize. Mm -hmm. um, the line consisted of four girls, Aster, the fitness model, uh, Houston, the personal shopper, Brooklyn, the event planner, and Billy, the bakery owner. All really fun jobs, mm -hmm. I feel like. 
Um, the dolls were made with beginning collectors in mind. Like the box actually says beginning collectors. Um, and represented, mm -hmm. these dolls represent new college grads ready to take on the world. Mm -hmm. um, but even as like beginning collector dolls, like I said, it still doesn't mean that they're being like shepherded away into a doll case. Mm -hmm. Some no. dolls probably were, but it also means they were meant to be priced a little bit better so that maybe you could put them under a Christmas tree for a younger child. Oh, so these are the, oh, very long-legged. So, um, uh, Riley is quoted as saying, during the creative process on this project, given our background, it was important to create something that would appeal to both kids and collectors, and in a way that meets our goal of a quality playline doll. So they really set out to make something that was of decent quality, mm -hmm. but was also durable enough to stand up to play and be, you know, a collector. It's also like looks a little more high fashion. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Between. So these dolls are um, 15 and well, they're basically like 16 inches tall if mm -hmm. they're in heels. So they're bigger than those guys, which is deceptive because if you look at their pictures on the internet, it's like how tall are these guys? Yeah. They could be this tall. Yeah. They could be this tall. It's very deceptive. <laughs> I'd love to see one in person actually, just to like still gauge it because I still don't feel like I know how tall. Right, they are. because we've never seen these. We never right. Um, Tanner said about these dolls, what I'm really proud of about these dolls is that they're tastefully trendy and fashionable mm -hmm. while maintaining a fresh innocence, which is totally true. It's a doll you wouldn't mind your little ones aspiring to be someday. I 100% agree. These dolls are adorable. They are cute. <laughs> it's just a very simple face, and I love that they got a little bit of the high fashion. The first wave of dolls featured deluxe doll, Golden Swirl Aster, Basic Dolls, Brooklyn and Houston, Dress Dolls, Taxi Billy, and Color Block Aster. There were also three fashion packs. They all had nylon hair and articulated vinyl bodies. From what we can tell, they were sold online on tonerdoll.com and were not sold in the stores. As far as we can tell, no second wave was ever released. Mm -hmm. The basic dolls were very basic. Like they were literally just sold in like oh, and in, in a like nightgown kind a of thing. Nightgown. Okay. <laughs> Um, but that, that makes sense because Ellen was too on a lot yeah, of those. Yeah, it definitely makes sense. But like also, the, the box was fairly simple too. Mm -hmm. It was just a, you know, see-through sort of cylinder kind of box and the dolls yeah. put in there. Their fashion packs though are adorable. Like this cape oh, outfit that is here. Cute. I, it's adorable. This outfit. one's super cute. That's adorable too, the color block. They're all really pretty. Yeah. Like, I want to look these guys up because... You want one. I feel like one of them would be nice. So it's kind of a shame that also they were a one wave wonder, so to speak. One wave one just, wonder. Just like Little Mismatch. Aww. One wave. This one was also one wave. <laughs> Model and Macabre, this lovely girl here, uh, made her Toy Fair debut in 2012. Her her head sculpted by Robert Tanner. She is personally a standout Tanner toy style. In my opinion. I love her. She's just so cute. Because a lot of people don't use a macabre kind of image on their dolls. Right? And I like that. I, I know. I like it. There's no press release that I could find for the release of Modelin. I would have loved to have found one. Um, but there was like nothing I could find that was behind the scenes on the creation of Model and Macabre, hmm. um, which is kind of sad. But as a fan, like I wish we had this information. Because um, I also, there's some, some little like hints about what the future of the line would have also been, mm -hmm. but I would have loved to know a little bit more. I also would love to know why she was, like, only sold, like, what, why she was the only one ever sold in this line. There's so many questions. So many. I blame it on parents. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, so this is what we can find out about Modelin. This is the doll I mentioned where I was like, I, I have a travel doll in here. I take I took my model in on a vacation once or twice, and she's just the best little travel doll. Cause you put her on a beach, <laughs> and you know it's a beaches are happy and pretty, and she's yeah. just like sitting there like Wednesday at <laughs> like, and it's adorable and I love it. 
Maudlin is the same size as Little Miss Match Dolls, 15 and a quarter, with 10 points of articulation. She's vinyl with large painted eyes and rooted raven hair, wears a Victorian goth chic dress, headband, fingerless gloves, tights, and Mary Jane shoes. Her box describes her as this. Maudlin Macabre is very sensitive, shy, and able to see spirits. I mean, who wouldn't love that? Mm -hmm. Maudlin was homeschooled for most of her life until her parents noted her peculiarness and decided it was time for her to socialize a bit more with regular kids. How's that working for you? <laughs> her favorite colors are black, blue, and purple. She likes dark chocolate, walks along, moonlit beaches, black cats, all nocturnal creatures, and nice musty attics. Lives in a Victorian mansion in a sleepy little town in upstate New York. Her style is modern, Victorian chic. Her ambition is to be a TV clairvoyant. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? And her best <laughs> friends are Victoria, the ghost in the attic, and Edgar Allen, the talking raven. You can't really get better than a bio like that. That's great. <laughs> I mean, she is just, she's the perfect doll. She is. Um, so, Maudlin was meant to be a series of dolls and was brought back to Toy Fair in both 2013 and 2014. Uh, and we both saw, well, I know I saw Maudlin at a booth. She might not have been there the year you went, no. but I definitely saw some like inklings of what they were going to do with oh. her at Toy Fair, and then they just never did anything. I think by the time we both went to Toy Fair, I'd asked Mr. Tonner about it. And there was, like, nothing. He was like, well, nothing's really going on with modeling right now. That was, he was doing Arrow and Finn. Yeah, I was... He was, that was more about that. Yeah, so he, he had unfortunately said not much was happening with it, and mm -hmm. it wasn't represented at the booth. But right. the previous two years and the year before, it had been. Um, so if you look at Toy Fair photos from 2013 and 2014, you'll see some outfits they had potentially planned for mm -hmm. Madeline. You'll also see her ghost friend, Victoria. Which, I want to see the ghost friend. I know. But I will say the Victoria that I saw was basically Madeline with blonde hair. Um, so they hadn't really, I think, figured, figured it, out it out. Because it was, it was Madeline's face sculpt mm -hmm. and it was blonde hair on Madeline and like a whitish sort of outfit, I think. Hmm. So they, it was a very early prototype. But Mod uh, Victoria would have been such a cool buddy for Madeline. That would have been cool. I just wish that they had released that one because I was waiting. I'm still waiting, Mr. Tatner, for Victoria. She is going to wait forever. <laughs> I was still waiting for Victoria for my, my Madeline to have a friend. Um, if you have Madeline, uh, watch out for a little fabric color that can come yeah. off on her arms. Yeah, and also sometimes her fingerless gloves don't. Cooperate. I have one that's broken. I think yeah. I decided unstitched. Um, so unfortunately, none of the things that were at Toy Fair 2013 or 14 ever came to be. Aww. So the only model in Macabre release in the model in series is this gorgeous doll. Um, but Mr. Tonner, if you're watching this, please bring it back. <laughs> Pretty. Please. We want to see the prototype again. <laughs> I just want to see a brand new line. She would have been perfect had they done like a book series or a comic series. They could have done that. Extra things like notebooks with mm -hmm. her picture. They could have just gone all all the way with this one. Call it a retro thing. We'll just mm -hmm. bring it back. Especially with like Wednesday the TV show being mm -hmm. so popular. This would be like perfect. Right. And she's got her tag on there so you know the toddlers have not played with her. Yeah, mine doesn't have the tag. Like I said, she went to like Minnesota. Hung out <laughs> on beaches. Um... But yeah, she's one of those dolls too where I wish I'd bought two of them because I really want to like, there's people that make really pretty outfits for modeling mm -hmm. and I just don't want to take her outfit off. Because it's macabre. It, right, so like I wish I had a second one that I could do more like play with, but I'm always on the lookout. There you go. I think one of the downsides with her was she was only sold on Tanner Toys or on the Tanner website. I remember, I remember it was mailed to us. Mm -hmm. I remember she was that. Only sold that, and she was priced at like forty-five dollars introduction, which for ki people that shop at Toys R Us, they're not going to go to Tanner's website and pay forty-five dollars for it. Yeah. If she'd been on Toys R Us shelves, maybe there would have been a better chance for her to survive. But then you need her friends ready to mm -hmm. put out there. So I. But don't we know. love her. We love you. I love you. Oh. Oh. All right, so our next line is not a Tonner toy line. As far as I can tell, Tonner toys only released the three lines we talked about. Uh, Little Mismatched, 
Modeling and the City Girls. I couldn't find anything else that specifically said Donner Toys mm -hmm. on it. Um, I could be wrong because it's, sometimes it's hard to search for that sort of stuff, but Pretty Girls Tween Scene, which you see right here, um, wasn't produced by Tyner Toys, but was originally a collaboration between One World Doll Company um, and Tanner Doll Company. So prior to the collaboration, One World Doll Company um, had released a line of fashion dolls, like Barbie-sized fashion dolls, uh, that were designed by Stacy McBride Irby, who was in the past a Mattel, a Mattel Barbie designer. Um, and so she had many popular releases under Mattel, and then she went to One World Dolls and started this Pretty Girl line. So in June of 2014, Robert Tanner wrote a letter endorsing One World Doll Company, praising the Pretty Girl line for the representation that they brought and the company's attention to detail without cutting corners. Mm -hmm. And in the letter, he mentioned that he was in would be interested in collaborating in a future project. He said... And this is from a press release. As a person who has been creating collector and fashion dolls for over 30 years, I can greatly appreciate the time, attention to detail, and most importantly, the expense that goes into delivering a high quality product like the Pretty Girls dolls. It is apparent that there was no cutting of corners and it's that is commendable. Mm -hmm. Stacy, the designer, your hard work is impeccable. And I'm a true believer that the Pretty, Do Pretty Girls dolls are the perfect representation of what I feel has been missing in the play and fashion doll space for years, and it is about time someone took advantage of the opportunities available for multicultural dolls, which is what One World Doll was producing. It's a multicultural doll company. Mm -hmm. So that letter of endorsement um, seems to have sparked a collaboration, and that was the creation and launch of Pretty Girls Tween Scene, which are um, right here. So the dolls... Uh, the, the launch of Pretty Girls tween scene was in October of 2015. Mm -hmm. um, and the dolls use the same body as Little Mismatched and Model mm -hmm. So they're the same height as both of those lines. They're roughly like 15 and a quarter inches tall. They say 16. It might be because of the hair, but also maybe 16 is just a rounder number. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot easier to, to say they're 16 inches tall. Mm -hmm. Um... They have the same articulation in the shoulder and the elbow and the head and the chest and the knee and the um, hip. And they are basically made of the vinyl as, as the other dolls were with painted eyes and rooted hair. Um, the pretty in Pretty Girl stands for pretty, respectful, enthusiastic, talented, truthful, inspiring, and excellent. I didn't know they were an acronym. Oh, see, I did know that. I didn't remember what the each of it stood for, but, but I, I knew, knew it, it was an acronym. acronym. Um, and there were six dolls in the line. You don't see all six of them here because we don't have all six, but um, we're going to talk about these guys and then let you know about the other ones as well. The premise for these dolls is that they all go to the Dream Academy of Excellence, a school where dreams can come true so long as you work hard. They come from countries across the globe, and no matter what they look like or where they're from, they believe that beauty comes from within. Within, These <clears throat> girls believe we all live on this planet together, and we can all be friends so long as everyone gives their best, respects others, and never takes life for granted. Which is a great message for a dollar. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, and, and we've seen that message come back with um, other uh, toy lines. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the dolls we have here, and then we'll um, briefly talk about the dolls that we will just be showing you as pictures. Lena. Lena is fun, fresh, exciting, and has made being smart cool. Her friends call her the whiz kid because whatever she puts her mind to, she comes out on top. She loves to learn and is always willing to help other kids with their homework or school projects. She is a straight-A student, spelling bee champ, and top fundraiser on the cheerleading squad. Setting goals is key. Next move, class president. If there is a science fair, mm -hmm. you can bet Lena will come home with first place. She's very cute. I love her outfit. She has one of my favorite outfits on these girls. And she just has simple hair. So yeah, like... I like it. I think her face is really pretty. Valencia. Loving life is Valencia's claim to fame. As part of her passion for life, it's about working out and eating right. 
as a young athletic girl, she focuses on being the best she can be. Whenever you are around her, be ready to move. She's a party all by herself. To be around her is so much fun because she's always moving and grooving to the hottest song as a way to stay fit. She loves watching cooking shows to test her healthy meal skills on her friends. With her fun way of cooking healthy foods along with exercise tips, you can almost smell her own show coming to a network near you. Kimani. This is Kimani right here. Kimani is beautiful on the inside and out. She's the best friend anyone could ever have. You can trust Kimani with your ultimate secret. When it comes to needing the perfect outfit, the right jewelry, or any fashion tip, Kimani is the go-to girl. Nothing can shake Kamani from experiencing joy. She's a spitfire, energetic, mm -hmm. free spirit who marches to the beat of her own drum. Artistic and creative in nature, she loves the arts and dreams of red carpet moments. Watch for her name in lights. There are three other girls in this line. Hannah, Alexi, and Dara. We don't have those. My mom didn't know they existed. No. Because <laughs> um, we only, very similar to the Little Mismatch girls, we only ever saw like these three. And we really saw these three at Walmart when it was like close to their demise and they were going mm -hmm. on clearance, so we grabbed them. <laughs> yeah, I wrote a blog post about finding them and like I can't even believe what I wrote because it says we got them, all three of these for a total of five dollars. Yeah. So I'm like, D did we really? Probably. But yes, because that's when we found out that every Walmart does a different clearance aisle. So you can't count on if you saw something at one store that mm -hmm. it's going to be reduced because they all do their own thing independently. Right, yeah. And these all went on sale at the one Walmart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I had to get him. <laughs> we never saw the other ones, though. No, so we didn't. It, they're worth looking into, though. And then her extra outfits. She has her extra outfit on. So in um, December of 2015, Continuing on with this saga, it was announced that Tanner and One World Doll Company were merging to form Tanner One World. Um, the goal was to develop new children's products as well as uphold Tanner's legacy of producing high-end, expertly crafted collectible dolls. Mm -hmm. So really, it was to continue doing things like this. Mm -hmm. um, around that same time, a second wave of tween scene was announced as well via the website um, One World, Tanner One World. Um, the New York City Pretty Girls, NYC Pretty Girls, are diverse in cultures and personalities, from the chic rocker Stone to the sophisticated classy Knox, the fun and funky Kyo, Kyo uh, the performing Princess Mela, uh, and finally to the sporty spunky Anja. Uh, they, were all, they are all so different, yet the common thread that binds them together is their love for the energy, character, community, and bright lights of New York City. When you look at this, you've got one picture up of here, mm -hmm. and you look at the face, it looks like Elowen. It does look like Elowen. I think that's Stone, the rocker chick. I think that I is... I want her! I know, right? <laughs> like, I... That's the only picture, I think, that was ever released of the second wave dolls. And she is so Elowen! <laughs> it's so cool, and I wish that there was a prototype of that floating around. Yeah. Um, so, as I said, from what I can tell, no other pictures exist of the second wave except for this cool rocker one hmm. but i want to know what Knox looks like and yeah. q and myla like i want to know what all these characters look like yeah so i'm i'm just super curious because i don't think anything was ever released under mm -mm. the tanner one world umbrella mm -hmm. um which is a shame and i yeah. don't think tanner one world exists anymore and i think that means one world doll company doesn't exist because it was a merger right so unfortunately that brand just like tanner doll company at this point when no it wonder exists. yeah again one hit is wonder. it a curse <laughs> like what is this what are the the tanner playline dolls just cursed oh. to be one wave only <laughs> what's the deal here and there were a couple other lines that were kind of like Playline dolls that Tanner did mm -hmm. um, that I'd, I'd asked around and people told me about. Ella Enchanted is one of them. He did apparently a line of Ella Enchanted dolls to tie in with the mm -hmm. movie. One of those weird like, licenses yeah. that he bought. Um, so there's that. Um, and there were a couple other ones that kind of fall, you know, it was kind of subjective, like 
are they play line or are they not? Mm -hmm. um, and some older ones. He, of course, did Magic Attic. He sculpted those faces. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another one he had a hand in. So there, there might be some ones that we did not talk about here in this presentation, but these are the more recent, mm -hmm. modern play line toys that Tanner had a hand in. Magic Attic, we don't see a lot at doll shows. No, very not few. Really. No. Yeah. I was always an AG girl, so I never got Magic Attic. No. Uh, so, this next part of the talk, we are going to switch gears a little bit here um, because this is a celebration about Robert Tanner and all of his works um, for this convention. So, we are going to show you some of the other dolls we have in our, our collections collection. that are from either Tanner Doll Company or that he had a hand in. All right, so we're going to talk about some of the Tanner dolls we have in our collections. Mm -hmm. Some of them are Playline, some of them are Tanner doll company, some of them are Wild Imagination. Wild Imagination. So there's a whole <laughs> plethora of ones that Different we... Different ones that you can look for and go and buy. Exactly. <laughs> I feel like what we have are less of like the high fashion things. We don't have high fashion, no. We don't really have that. Uh -uh. Um, but this doll here could very well be considered a Playline doll. She fits in with all the other 18 inch dolls that mm -hmm. are out there. American Girl, um, Mario and Friends, A Girl mm -hmm. for All Time. This is My Imagination from Tanner. Um, she is dressed as Glinda. Mm -hmm. She was a basic doll. Um, these came out in, they were at Toy Fair in 2015 and 2016. So Which is when I was there, had to have been, because that's yeah. where I saw them on display. I think tw you were 2016 when you mm -hmm. went. So I saw them a year before when they were launched, and in 2016 was when they did kind of a second wave. Mm -hmm. Although, again, I'm not sure how much of that wave they actually rode. Like, I remember there was a Supergirl. <laughs> there was. There was a Supergirl, too. The nice thing about this was they sold basic dolls mm -hmm. with very limited articulation, then they sold dolls with knee joints and elbow joints. Um, and that were wigged. I don't think this one's wigged. No, she's um, not. But the, the deluxe basic doll had a removable wig. And then mm -hmm. because Tanner had all these licenses for things, they got like Wizard of Oz outfits, mm -hmm. they got DC outfits, they got cool outfits. They did. Um, and she goes with my side collection of Oz. Yeah. So all of their outfits were so adorable. Some of them were like very like fancy like mm -hmm. this. Some of them were just like more basic, but they had a picture of a Wicked Witch on it. Mm -hmm. Like what a kid would wear. Um, so this was actually a really great line. This is a, a group that I found at a doll show. And first I found the spaceship and the spaceship came with this one. Are you done playing with my stuff? I just wanted people to be able to <laughs> see the spaceship. Okay, this is the spaceship. And this is Sunspots who's sitting in the driver's seat. These were done for the 2007 uh, convention that Tanner did for it was a centerpiece and I found these three at another doll show all together and I was able to pick them up all together so you have um, pink is Zippy silver is Starla and you have purple is Celestra so I thought they were the cutest thing when I saw them and I'm like they were on a centerpiece really That's and this so person cute. was selling it <laughs> That they are adorable, and uh, it's uh, Luna and the um, the tiny the little Martians. Luna and the Martians. Um, she's a taller doll. I don't have her, but um, she has a different skin tone, color, and, mm -hmm. and she's kind of cool too. But I love I love the little ones. So those are my my fun ones. Yeah, these are so fun. They do go in a case, and I just look at them. <laughs> All right, so I am a huge Whovian, especially when it comes to. Doctor Who, um, Russell T. Davies era Doctor Who. Um, and that was the era of Christopher Eccleston and David Tennant mm -hmm. uh, with Rose and Martha um, and Donna. Like that's like the perfect like Doctor Who era for me. Um, so these two, when they were announced at, when it was announced that Tanner was doing Doctor Who dolls, I was like, well, I'm super interested. Cause you don't get a lot of Doctor Who merchandise here, especially when it's like doll form. Yeah. Like, we don't get the dolls. We get, like, get maybe action the action figures. figures. But these were, like, cool little collector's dolls. So in 2010, that's when these guys came out. There were actually four dolls released. Uh, this is David Tennant, the 10th Doctor. John Barrowman is Captain Jack. Um, and then there was also Martha, who was a companion to the Doctor. 
and Gwen, who was kind of like a companion to Jack. I don't have the girls. It was kind of weird because when they released the line, it was 2010, and Martha as a companion had already left the show. Yeah. So it was kind of an odd choice, but they were probably planning these years earlier, and I have a feeling that communications between like the BBC and the United States mm -hmm. companies is kind of slow. Mm -hmm. That's what was kind of alluded to as far as like why these guys were so delayed, because there were some delays in the production. Um, so I think maybe communication took a while. So mm -hmm. by the time they released this line in the United States, like David Tennant was leaving and Martha was like way gone. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was an interesting side story there. Goodbye, Martha. But David Tennant, like for the most part, he looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. I bought this on eBay and they had restyled his hair and given him sideburns. He looks much better with the restyled hair and sideburns than he did if you bought him like factory. But the sculpt itself, mm -hmm. I see David Tennant. Yeah. Um, and his body type is perfect. And then you get to get to Captain Jack, who also looks very much like John Barrowman. It's definitely the body of John Barrowman. Um, but they're just very, very cool dolls. Hmm. I do regret never buying the duster, because you could buy the duster separately. Uh. So I never got that. And I put Monster High glasses on David Tennant occasionally. Because there is a scene where he wears 3D glasses like that. <laughs> so it fits perfectly, even though I believe they're Monster High Frankie glasses. Um, so these are two of my, my Doctor Who dolls. And, like, I looked up the prices people want for them secondhand. And they actually, like, people have a pretty high price. I don't think they sell them for that. But, like, these two mm. apparently have some value. I just like them because they're fun and they're cute and they're Doctor Who themed. Yes, of course. These are some of my favorite Oz. Um, these are Wild Imagination. Um, it's like Ella Wynn Go Wild kind of thing. Um, really pop art kind of cool girl. And you can see that she's got a winged monkey and her, it's hanging from her belt. And she has Toto on her necklace. And then Glenda. Glen, Glenda's cool. She's cool. She's got the butterflies all over hanging. And this is like where she would fly in her little bubble, I think. Mm -hmm. um, they are just so cool. Um, they got style. They've got style. And they're really, really good when you want to do a, something on <laughs> photography and you put them in there. Um, the only thing that ever really bugged me was that um, Dorothy's eyes, the way she's looking up, kind of a little strange. <laughs> she's like dazed. <laughs> but the other girls are straight in the middle and they're, they're, they kick. She they just do. landed in Oz. She just She's landed like, in Oz. Wait, what? Where am I? <laughs> but they are so cool and they've got so, so much Elowin look to them mm -hmm. with the ribbons and yeah, the like, buckles and the, and I love that. Yeah, yeah. The train. Glinda. I love the Glinda. Yeah. So those are some of my favorite tanners. Okay. So these are, um, two Patience's. Patience was a wild imagination line. Um, they didn't make a ton of them. There, there were a few, but there, there's not a ton. So if you want a smaller collection to try to get, and you have a little bit of cash, you could probably try to get the Patience uh, collection. So, oops. Oops. This is Tokyo Patience. She is decked out in a kimono. Um, she does have shoes, but they don't like to stay on, and you can't ever see them. Um, and her hair is just done up in these, like, space buns. Space buns. I like her space buns. Yeah, and the thing with... Patience is like her eyes are flirty eyes, so they will go back and forth. As long as you don't have something on top of their head. Yeah. So Patience is just a really fun character, I feel like, that, that Wild Imagination released. Um, and this was a gift, and I, it's the only Patience I have, so I quite like her. And this is Patience as a Glinda. Um, my only complaint is every time this knocks down, we lose another little tip to Glinda's. It's very fragile. It's very, it's it's really thick, and I think mm -hmm. that's why I think it's thick and fragile. Mm -hmm. But I'll just keep it off her. Yeah. But she's so cute. They do have a Dorothy, so you should look for the Dorothy. They have a Dorothy? Yeah, that's what I just pulled up. There was one that looked like Dorothy. I don't remember a Dorothy. Yeah, you should you have to find that one. Um, this isn't her stand, so that's yeah. why she's flopsy-bopsy. I just grabbed any stand I could find. But Patience is really fun. And she's so sweet. I love her curls. And these are my favorites. These are my favorites because I won them in the poetry contest that Robert Tanner had. And 
I like to say that it was so much fun doing the um, the contests and working on them. It gave me like a weekend of working on, on just poetry and things to rhyme and Henri. So next time you do that, if you do another poetry contest, you're going to have to be really careful because if you do a contest, people are using AI machines to do poetry because I was able to put mm -hmm. Elowen's name in and Henri and it gave me like a staggering amount of poems <laughs> That with those two words and I could even put in your last name and it came up with the you do something with a yeah. doll <laughs> yeah it was a, yeah AI is scary so it's, <laughs> it's not the same because you can do that in two seconds and I would spend a whole week working on I need to get this poem done and figure yes. out some ideas and it was the most fun I ever had yeah. and I was able to win a couple dolls yeah so um, they're my favorites. I know. My mom spent so much time. She'd have <laughs> multiple poems and be like, okay, I, I think this one's better. I and did. I hate writing poetry <laughs> or reading poetry. So I was just like, I'm not doing this. But yeah, my mom like, got into it. I did. And, and your efforts paid off. Girls. They did. I've got two girls, two different girls. <laughs> and um, she has her own horse. So she has a good mm. life here. And she just has yeah. fun with all One's the different prudence, ways. Right? Is that one prudence? This is Prudence. Prudence is just wearing the blonde wig today. Mm. But um, Prudence is one of my favorites, so. She has a really great sculpt. So thank you. <laughs> okay, and my last Tanner, well, I have a Tanner TV Time Cindy doll when they were re releasing the Cindy's. And I have one too, but um, I don't know where she's. Yeah, yeah, so I think I got mine when they were on sale, but I also think mine was a convention exclusive mm. um, TV Time. So she's super high up on a shelf, so I'm just gonna put a picture in here. Very cute, a little different than what I expected, because um, I expected them to be more playline, but I think they were made right. to be more collectible than playline. Because her headline, her head's thick, right? It's, yeah, it's a hard head. It's she she was a little different than yeah. I expected, but she's also super cute, she's and her really, lashes were really thick, like so. bristly, yeah. Yeah, so again, it was another like UK, um, mm -hmm. like British mm -hmm. company that they collaborated with. Um, and Cindy is still around and, and mm -hmm. kicking, so uh, that's definitely, if you're a Cindy collector, look at the Tanner Cindy's, because mm -hmm. there were a couple of them released. Um, but this was the last one I wanted to show you. This is Agatha Primrose. She's missing her um, glasses, her glasses, which are like kind of her thing, or her glasses. So this is Yo-Yo Agatha Primrose from 2015. Um, I love the Agatha Primrose line. I just can't afford the Agatha Primrose line. This is only in my collection because Rachel was nice to me. <laughs> and she was like, do you want her? And I was like, yes, please. Um, so I'm looking for more because the, there's an Agatha in like a, like a Japanese schoolgirl outfit, a touch of anime, I think it's called. It was adorable. There's one in like this cool little pink prom dress that's just like, I just dorky that enough that I'm just like, this is so I remember cute. That. Yeah. Um, and I will always remember going to Toy Fair and like seeing this line debut and mm -hmm. talking to Robert Tyner about it and like him describing it as adorkable and adorable. I'm like, that's adorable <laughs> <laughs> that you describe it as adorkable. Adorkable. Um, cause it was so true and on point with this line. She's just so trendy, but also like very much unique. She is. I just love this line and I wish they were cheaper so I could have more. Retro, come back. It's another one where if I had more, I would like, take her as a travel doll. Like yeah. I would like... Totally, because there's some that are more basic, just with like the normal hair and stuff. Um, but I would take her around and like take more pictures of her and stuff. Yeah, and we never see her at any doll shows. Never. No. Ugh. So yeah, that's the last one I have to show you. And that's really it on the other Tanner stuff I have in my, my collection. So we hope you enjoyed the program today, and, and we hope you enjoyed learning more about Tanner's Playline mm -hmm. adventures with Tanner Toys and other companies, as well as seeing some of the stuff that we have in our collections. That's right. It's always so much fun it's to show so people fun. like what's in our what's in the what's in our doll collections. Just like it's always fun to see what's in your doll collection. Oh, I'd love to. Um, so you can find us online um, on YouTube. I'm QP83 K E W P I E. This is Barbie0913 B A R B E E0913. Many times we are in each other's videos. Um, so definitely, if you are a fan. On, of YouTube, check out our channels, like, subscribe, all the fun stuff. Huge thank you to Rachel for inviting us to present at the virtual doll convention. Yet again, it's always such an honor, mm -hmm. um, and it's so much fun getting to interact with you guys. I'm happy Tonner Fest to everyone. Yeah, happy Tonner Fest. Um, 
yeah and is there anything else before we leave these lovely people no i think they should go and buy something I don't yeah know. so happy googling yeah <laughs> <laughs> um and we hope to see you again at another virtual doll convention soon bye, -bye. bye.